Right, now, with the can removed, i uh, got the power on at the moment, all looks good. Now, if you look at that bit of print there, the bit of print, see where it says C249 on the right hand side? And then it says C250, I think that is. It's a bit scraped there. C251, etc., along there. Now, if you look at that, You can see, whoa, you can see that the metal can has scraped some varnish off that bit of print. I think that is the smoke that is the smoking gun. So if I put my meter on this point here. That point there, what have we got? Set to the 15 volt range, got about 14 volts there. You can probably see that. So that bit of print there, this bit of print, with that nasty little scrape on it there, that little scrape. There you go, just touching that, just touching that on that bit of print. Just touching that on that bit of print there. 14 volts. That is the smoking gun. So the edge of the case is on is overlapping onto that bit of print. So uh, just have to modify it. I might put a bit of tape on the board actually across that. Just to uh, just to give that a little bit of extra protection, and uh, see what I can do about refitting the can so that it does not cause that intermittent short. Oh, hello again, and uh, right. So, uh, having seen the nasty bit of uh, print there, what I've done is, um, or the nicest scrape on the print and seeing what they've done which is have a metal flange over a piece of printed circuit board a bit of, bit of, uh, bit of track there that's got the 12 volt rail voltage on it I thought that was uh, that was really quite poor so what I've done is um, I've trimmed the got some tin snips I've trimmed the edge right off of this vertical side here so that it's a, a, about a millimeter above the, uh, I'll put some tape over the board as well, but um, this stops about a millimetre above that. It doesn't go down and rest on the tape, so there's no contact between this and the black tape. And the same there, I've cut that tab off. There was a rather nasty tab here, and that nasty tab um, actually went over a couple of bits of print, and one of them was a 12 volt rail, and I thought, you know, just having a bit of varnish separating the 12 volt rail from the um, uh, from the ground of this screen was uh, not very good at all. So I've got it powered again. There we are, powered up. It's all looking good. It's powered uh, through the coax via the bias T. So the power is going through my new RF choke and the new diode that I've fitted that's uh, under there. Okay, so with a little bit of luck, that will be the end of this particular device's woes with regard shorts on the 12 volt rail and um, I don't know if you got one of these but um, it might be worth you modifying yours uh, in the same fashion because that's really not a very good design um, you know having a having a piece of printed circuit board this strip here goes all the way along here it's got the 12 volt rail on it and it's right under this metal flange so it used to go down and then out horizontally and the only thing separating the, and then there's a bolt there holding the thing down. So, you know, there's, there's absolutely nothing really. The only thing that's keeping the 12 volt rail from shorting out onto this is the varnish. So there we go. It's powered up, it's looking good. It's powered through the bias T, so the power is going through the RF choke and the new diode that I've fitted under here. It's all looking happy, so I think tomorrow I'll find out if it tunes.